Uh, Patty Doran uh, is the next speaker. Uh, Patty, while you're present, you're preparing your slides, I'll briefly introduce you. Okay. Um, Patty is a research associate in Manchester Urban Aging Research Group at the University of Manchester, currently working on a transdisciplinary international project exploring age-friendly cities. Uh, key research interests uh, center on health, inequalities, social justice, and the life course uh, and using mixed methods to address complex research questions. Uh, and Patty will be talking about resilience and living well beyond cancer, the relationship between emotional support and quality of life. Patty, welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Um, it's nice to be here and be able to talk to you all today. So thank you for inviting me. Um, as mentioned, I'm talking about living well beyond cancer. So the relationship between emotional support and quality of life for cancer survivors. And this is a piece of work that I completed a few years ago now um, for my PhD. And so the overall aim of the work was to investigate the influence of emotional support on the quality of life of older cancer survivors. And that came from um, a background that I had. I used to work for Macmillan Cancer Support, a big charity in the UK. Um, and I worked through public libraries to provide support to people affected by cancer. Um, and this is the conceptual framework for my study. It was a mixed method study and I interviewed older people who had lived or were living through cancer treatment and um, surviving beyond cancer. And then I developed my quantitative phase. So that was the final phase or the second phase of the research. And I was specifically looking at the um, social support and quality of life for cancer survivors. So just to say, it was a mixed method study. And so the variables that I picked within my data set were driven by the findings that I had from my qualitative interviews with older people um, affected by cancer. It was very important to me that I listened to these stories first. Gosh, I listened to those stories first. And that's what um, helped me design my quantitative research. And I used um, for my data set, the English Longitudinal Study of Aging, ALSA. ALSA is a long running um, cohort study of people 50 plus in England. And so it's not a data set like some of the ones Ali was just showing that's specifically about cancer or specifically about any health condition. Rather, um, it's a large social survey, but it does ask people um, if they've had a cancer diagnosis and some other a few other questions around um, their cancer if they're being diagnosed. So this was uh, the methods that I used. So I used wave one of the ALSA data, which I think if I recall right, it's 2002. Um, so it was quite old data, but that wave had the highest number of cancer survivors in the data set. And so you can see from the slide, there was eight um, total number of 8,736 in the sample um, and 6%, over 6% of those were cancer survivors. So that gave me quite, um, and there were 533 of them. So that gave me quite a good subsample of cancer survivors within the data set. And then I was able to control for a whole range of social factors, as well as um, looking at quality of life as my outcome variable. And I'll go into that in a little bit more detail um, and tell you about some of my findings and some of my analysis. So um, firstly, I divided the, set, the subset of the cancer survivors from the total population. And there were significant differences between the population over some variables. So uh, cancer um, survivors were more likely to be female than the general population. Um, they were more likely to be widowed um, and they were more likely to have a long-standing illness, which is perhaps um, not surprising. And then what I did is I developed a indicator for emotional support. And there's, you know, there's a lot of different variables in ALSA. It's a very um, fantastic data set, really. Um, and they asked three questions in there around emotional support. So they asked, firstly, if you have any friends, if you have any family, do you have any children, do you have a partner? And then for each of those, they said, how much do they understand how you feel? How much can you rely on them? And how much can you open up to them if you need to talk to somebody about your worries? And so what I did is I 
merged those three questions into a scale. Each question was on a scale of um, one to four. So I merged them together to get a scale of one to 12 and looked at it separately for family, friends, children and partners and to see how much social support people had from those different groups. And as would be expected, most people did have quite a high amount of support from most of those areas. Um, family um, was the only one that kind of had higher amounts at the end, but um, we'll show how that plays out um, in a couple of slides. And again, there was some significant differences between cancer survivors and people who hadn't had cancer in terms of support. On all cases, um, cancer survivors reported having more support from each of those groups. And you know, perhaps that's because once you go through a transition like having cancer, um, you need to call on that support more. And so it's more real to you that you have that support and you're more aware of the support that you do have. The outcome variable that I used was quality of life, and that was measured using CAS-19. CAS-19 is a um, needs-based measure. It's a holistic measure of quality of life. So it's not about health, um, physical health or mental health as such. It's more about um, a holistic approach that, can, that covers things like control, autonomy, self-realization, and pleasure. So they ask questions like, are you able to achieve all the things you want to be able to achieve? So it was more um, aspirational and more individualized. And that was, um, that's the distribution, which is the normal distribution that you'd expect for CAS-19, but that's using the ELSA data. And so when I put mean um, quality of life scores against social support, um, and this is the graph that I found. So the social support is the measure that I developed using those questions that I mentioned earlier. And then it's how much support you have from partner, children, family, or friends. And I added another point at the start of the scale, or the lower end of the scale to say no support. And so no support would be if you didn't have a partner or you didn't have any children, or you didn't have family or friends. And we, what I found was this really interesting dip so you can see, for example, it's most, um, most obvious with the partner. So people that didn't have a partner um, had much higher quality of life than people that had low level, had a partner, but low levels of support or some support. They only got up to the same levels of um, quality of life once they were receiving high support from a partner. So my thinking around that was, if you have a partner, but if you've got low support, it might be because you're actually a carer for your partner. So you're the one supporting them. And of course, if you're in a situation like that, then um, you know, your quality of life isn't going to be as great because you're spending a lot of time um, caring for somebody else. And that was kind of backed up by some of the interviews that I had in the first phase of my research. And then finally, I did um, some regression modeling where I controlled for all the factors. And you could see um, that the highest um, or the, the, the biggest impact on quality of life was having that low support from a partner you know, that was affecting um, quality of life by um, quite, a few, quite a few points. And also, um, but even controlling for all the different types of social support having um, been a cancer survivor still had a negative impact on um, quality of life. So overall, um, what I found was that there was a positive relationship between emotional support and quality of life. So the more support you had, you know, the better your quality of life was going to be. But what was interesting was that I found that low as opposed to no support was associated with the lowest levels of quality of life. So your people that didn't have support from any particular type of or any particular area, um, perhaps they're more adjusted to living that way. And so therefore their quality of life was higher than people that did have um, partners or children or family or friends, but were receiving low support from them. Uh, but still the negative impact of having a cancer diagnosis added significantly to lower quality of life. Um, and so the limitations to the study was that it, there was a small subset of cancer survivors in ELSA. I mean, like I said, it wasn't 
it wasn't tiny, it was 600, or it was 6% of the overall sample. So it was large enough to get um, some results, but it still, um, it included people that had had diagnosis at any point in their lives. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't as good as it could be if it was higher. Um, it is possible to link the cancer registry to ELSA, but that um, is, is tricky. And <laughs> we can talk more about that later if you like. Um, but we've also found out that there were more women and um, they, they had higher mean age and they were more likely to be widowed and to have a long standing illness. So the sample that we were using was not the same as the sample of the wider population. And so again, um, it wasn't a like for like comparison between cancer survivors and the general population as a whole. Um, and also what I would like to have seen in the ALSA data set was a variable for other sort of support because so it had partner, children, family and friends, but I was interested in whether they received support from other sort of third sector organisations or perhaps even from like the healthcare providers. And I think if we had a question in the data set about that, then that might um, bring some more findings to the situation. So in conclusion, I concluded that the relationship between emotional support and quality of life was um, present for both cancer survivors and older people without cancer. However, low emotional support compounds with uh, the independent detrimental effects of quality of life of being a cancer survivor. So low emotional support um, reflects complex situations. So that's what I was saying about, you know, the, perhaps being a carer or having other um, issues in your life, which means that um, you have low support from different areas and different people within your life. If you want to find out more about um, the study and more details of what I've talked about, it is published in um, the Journal of Aging and Health. And um, there's a reference for that here at the end, as well as other um, interesting documents that relate to the topic. So that's a very quick run through of um, the research I did. And I think these slides will be circulated afterwards, or if you have any questions at the end, um, feel free to ask me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Patty. That was an excellent example of the insights that we that can be drawn out of quality data, but it was really interesting that you also identified some gaps because it's not always a straightforward equation and having more data sets can, can be even more useful.